What's going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Reefer, coming at you with today's video, which is the DIY overhead sump. So, let's go. Okay, so for those of you that are new, hello, my name is Jack, I am indeed The Balding Reefer, or should I say Bald Reefer now. I specialise in tropical, cold water, marine and also pond fish as well. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, support, please support me as a new creator. Swipe up if you're watching this on Landscape Mirror on your phone now, and either here or here, they will be a subscribe button. Hit that and hit the bell notification, then you can get to watch all of my builds along. And if you're returning, welcome back. As I mentioned on the Friday Night Live, hanging out in the fish room, chewing the fat with the balding reefer, I want to sump this tank. Now, this tank here, obviously, excuse the better rack, um, this tank here, obviously I did a custom uh, aquarium stand build uh, on this one. But I want this as like a sort of a, a miscellaneous tank where we can just put different fish in, uh, see how they're interacting, see how they're getting along and sort of have it as like a little bit of a mini sort of grow out tank. Obviously at the moment I'm just running the sponge filter uh, that's on there at the moment. A couple of pieces of bog wood, an awful lot of mulm in there. There's four zebra danios. There's one blue platinum uh, angel, uh, and there is also two convict cichlids in here, and also a king tiger plec, a little wee baby one. Now what I want to do is, because I don't want to hide the filtration down underneath, I actually want to do another fun build with you guys. So what I'm actually going to be doing is putting a sump on the top of this tank here. Now I'm actually going to use these internal rail supports here to actually balance... Um, the actual sump on that I'm going to be doing. Now, in regards to what are we actually using to sump this bad boy? An old flower pot planter. This whole build is going to come under like 40 quid. Call it 44, 45 dollars for our American friends. This planter though actually cost me nothing. The super glue that I've used to actually put these pieces of plastic in here has cost me all of like what? Two quid, I think the super glue was. And the only reason I've had to do it is because this planter here wasn't always, well, I say wasn't always, didn't always have holes in it. The only reason it is, is I actually once used it as a garden planter and I wanted to add these holes in for drainage. However, no, silly old me, I'm wishing I never did that. The basics of the build is we're gonna have uh, an internal power head, which is here. That's going to line its size, Ooh, yeah, like that. Hose coming off this end piece here, up into the top, through some bulkheads, spray bar, out back down the other end. Now, first, let me show you exactly what we're going to be doing to this to be able to turn it into a sump. I have these 21 and a half millimeter bulkheads from Screwfix. For five, it cost me like 3.99. What I'm going to do is let me spin it around. I'm going to have one inlet here near the top, and then I'm going to have two outlets here just over the back. Let me just bore these holes out of here and come back to you shortly. So, what I actually want to do with this is try and get this bulkhead as close to the top as I possibly can. And the simplest way to do that. is to just grab a black sharpie and draw yourself a hole. Now what I want to do is drill out said hole in the top. Okay, so that there is the first hole drilled in. Now what I want to do is get my clear washer and put it on the inside of this. Slot that through there and then grab my nut and actually tighten it up on the inside. Try and get that as tight as we can to try and create that watertight seal. And yeah, that's not going anywhere. So in essence, that there, once we connect the pipe up on the side, is exactly where our water is gonna be coming in. Now what we wanna do, it's follow the same process on this side and draw in uh, draw two circles here where we're actually going to put these other two outlets 
Okay, so <clears throat> here is the first bulkhead, which is the inlet in here. As you can imagine there, spray bar across the top. And here are your two outlets. The reason why we have one inlet versus two outlets is if one of the outlets is to ever get blocked, yes, the overflow will actually be above the tank and obviously it will spill over, but I don't want that to ever happen. So if one of these is to ever get blocked, at least then we've, we've got a chance of being able to catch it whilst obviously we've still got the other one that's free. Now there's nothing saying they're both gonna get clogged up at the same time. However, the chances of that actually happening are very, very, very slim. Okay, so like an absolute fool, I've realized I've not actually got the connecting piece for this. However, that's not gonna stop us doing this build, don't worry, and it'll still work exactly the same. Here's your uplift pipe. It comes out the side. Obviously you can have a pump attached to the bottom of that. Water's gonna come in, spraying over the top of this lava rock. Now this lava rock is fantastic um, biological filtration. As you can see there, obviously it is ridiculously porous if it focuses, there you go. It is ridiculously porous. And if we were to actually break this in half with a hammer, it's exactly the same on the inside as it is the outside. Now I want to layer this across the bottom. I've also hidden my heater inside of here as well. My heater is already set uh, to 26 and a half degrees. Um, and obviously I wanna hide that in here so it's not actually on show in the tank. So all we're actually gonna see in the tank is literally just the power head uh, in the bottom, just on the end there. And obviously it's gonna sit just down there in that corner. <clears throat> now what I wanna do is actually add in my mechanical filtration. So I've got some old sponges here. Oh, no, blue first. I've got some old sponges here. So these here will literally just slot in over the top of there. Now, like I say, as, as these are old sponges, they have got a little bit of, like I say, sort of bacteria buildup on them from before, but that's not something that I'm particularly worried about or anything like that. Let's get the next one on. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some more of that lava rock and I'm actually gonna place that lava rock on top of here. Now the reason for that is what I eventually want to be able to do is plant some pothos plants in the top of here so they'll actually start growing up the wall. But again, obviously we'll have to come back in another video for that. So if you aren't subscribed, obviously hit that uh, subscribe button and the bell notification as well. But let me put this up on top of the tank and show you exactly how it works when it's all plumbed in. Okay, so she is in. Powerheads, just here. Connected onto the uplift tube, comes all the way up here, through there. Water's going through the mechanical filtration into the biological filtration, which is all the rocks at the bottom. And obviously we've got our heater just down here in the bottom. Water flows all the way down here now, out the two outlets and straight down into there. Now, if I actually turn off the sponge filter completely, Obviously there's so much aeration going into that water there just through these two outlets here. There is a little bit of a leak underneath, which is obviously from one of the plug holes that I did. But like I say, this was just a, a sort of what I had to hand today when I wanted to do this build, just to sort of showcase you guys how simple, cheap and easy we could have done it. Now for me, obviously I had to get the content out in time for you guys. Normally what I would have done was let these holes here soak up that super glue an awful awful lot more what would i change different in the future i'd probably be investing in any one of these obviously it's got a little bit of flims to it this one has only because the plastic is so so old i don't think it's going to burst its banks by any stretch of the imagination i probably would have gone bigger on these two outlets here as well if i'm being totally honest and again there is a little bit of a leak on the side here that's just simply where i haven't tightened it up enough though but let me know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. Do you think we should swap it to like a black one? So then obviously you've got the black trim across here. We'll have the black top on there. Obviously we could paint these black as well. Let me know what you guys think. And we can redo it but better next time. But I mean, for the time being, it's, it is a super filter. I mean, this isn't too much of a pain. It's actually adding extra aeration into the tank itself. The sump offers a stupendous amount of filtration for the little bit of re um, real estate that it actually takes up above there on that tank. 
I'm not bothered about these beams here because they are literally welded on there, front and back. Obviously this one here has got a little bit of a crack in it, uh, but like I said, that's years old, but that doesn't affect the rigidity of the tank at all. I know I need to put an outlet on here because obviously I don't want none of my fishy friends to get sucked up. But yeah, I mean, overall, I'm over the moon with this. I think it's absolutely incredible. The piping cost me like £1.47. These elbows here were like £3, well, I call it four quid because they were £3 something, but I call it four quid. The box was free, the foams I already had, and the lava rock that we're using for the biological filtration, I already had anyway. So this whole build, and the power head, sorry, the power head I already had. This whole build has cost me like five quid to do. Like a five pound overhead sump. Now if you're doing this yourself, yes, you could pick up a second hand power head for like five, 10 pounds. These are always going free on uh, Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. The lava rock itself, you can get a bag of that from B&Q for like 15 pound. Your heater, no doubt you'd already have the heater anyway, but again, five pounds off of Facebook. So all in all, this whole setup for like 40 quid. I am buzzing with this one, absolutely buzzing. And like I say, this water here at the minute is super, super murky. Once it starts filtering through here, it's gonna clear up in no time. And what we could also do is we could also add some filter floss. Let me switch around back to the top and show you what I mean. So we could add some filter floss in here. Obviously I've just put these bricks on here for the time being just to weigh this foam down because it was floating right up to the top. But where you can see green, we could put some filter floss on there, which again is gonna take all of that fine particulate matter out of that water. But this power head here does 700 liters an hour. I have got no doubts by the time I come down in the morning, all this here will be clear. I do need to get a background on here as well. But like I say, I just wanted to show you guys the basics of a do-it-yourself overhead sump that you can do for real, real cheap. Hope you guys like this one. I absolutely love doing it. There's some massive, massive updates coming in the fish room, guys, over the next couple of weeks. So like I keep saying throughout the video, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you get to follow my builds along. We've got the aquascaping rack coming up. We've got the sort of grow out tanks and the breeding tanks here. We've got the angel fish bays coming along now. This tank here is gonna be moved over here. The sword tail tank is gonna be moved to where that one is. And all this is gonna be literally dedicated just to breeding and growing out angel fish. Obviously we've got these racks here, which we're gonna have two tanks on the bottom, two tanks there, so there's four. Basically each one's gonna have two on there like that. There's six tanks per rack, 12 tanks in total. We're gonna to have an awful, awful lot of fish. Today I went up and I picked up some Pearl Danios, some fry off a good friend of mine. So again, just growing these guys out at the moment. Subscribe, don't miss out. But that's it, follow me on social media for more behind the scenes sneak peeks. Facebook and Twitter is at The Baldy Reefer. Instagram is slightly different, popping up just down here now. That is at the dot balding dot reefer. But yeah, as I always say guys, stay safe, stay sane, most importantly, please stay happy. Balding Reefer, out.